Welcome to a brand new video about all the changes I've made to my workspace and overall setup. Everything in this setup has been chosen and laid out in a way that is beneficial to myself in the way I work, create and game, while also maximizing what little space I have to utilize. So let's start off with the desk. There aren't too many big upgrades from the last video, but there are a lot of small ones which make a big difference. The main build of this desk setup is currently unchanged from last year. I'm still using the IKEA Kalbi kitchen worktop that is sitting on top of the Flexispot E7B standing desk frame. This combination has been absolutely fantastic. It's sturdy, strong, and with the E7B, I can adjust the height for the perfect seating position. When I've sat down for too long and my Apple Watch starts telling me to stand up, with the touch of a button, I can raise the desk and go into a standing work position. This frame also has four programmable positions, a lock for the touchpad, and a USB port for charging the odd peripheral when needed. One great thing about a standing desk outside of its ergonomic benefits is that if you're in a small space or you use this in your bedroom, you can push your chair underneath the desk at the end of the day for a little extra room. The monitor I use is one of great frustration. It is the LG 27 GP95R, a product I mentioned in my best and worst tech of 2023 video. I talked about all the pros and cons of this monitor and why it's so great, but so, so awful at the same time. To summarize, it has a 4K 144Hz panel, which gets very bright and has some excellent color accuracy. But unfortunately, it suffers from occasional screen flicker and some burn-in, despite not being an OLED panel. On top of this is the BenQ screen bar. I have been using it for a very long time now. I've said so much on this in the past, but if you're new to this product, it reduces eye strain and brightens up your workspace. I have the monitor mounted to a budget arm, and when it comes to monitor arms, don't be afraid of some of the more affordable ones. I've had this for years with zero issues. The only changes I've made to it is that I removed one extension arm to shorten the overall reach. This gives it an overall better look as the monitor arm no longer pops out of the side of the monitor. Mounted to the rear of the monitor are two Philips Hue play bars which bounce light off the back of the wall. This serves two purposes. A great way to add some accent lighting and visual flair to the setup, but also to provide bias lighting so I'm not straining so much when looking at the monitor for a long time. I do have two slight issues with these lights. One, they flicker on camera when I'm recording a video, and two, the double-sided tape that Philips provides isn't very good and the left light falls off from time to time. Below all of this screen real estate is the Grove Made desk shelf. It's a very expensive piece, but the craftsmanship is great and the shelf really clears up a lot of clutter on my desk. I store all of my daily used items here, like an iFixit toolkit, my Novium Designs notebook, a backup drive for the day job, a few bits and pieces, and the incredible CalDigit TS4 Thunderbolt dock. There is also the Grove Made tray, which perfectly slots into this nook on the right hand side. Here I keep odd bits and pieces that I may need to use at any time, like my USB thumb drives, the microphone for my gaming headset, spare pens, Apple Watch straps, and more. Audio is very important for work and also entertainment. So when I'm not using my AirPods Pro 2, I'm using the Kanto YU2s. They are a decent sounding set of speakers, but for some reason, they're incredibly quiet when used with my MacBook Pro when compared to when I use them on my gaming PC. I'm not sure what's going on there if I'm honest, but it is rather annoying. They sit on top of the Kanto speaker stands which elevate the speakers and aim the sound directly into my ears, which provides a much better listening experience. On the right hand side of the shelf, I have two Delta Hub products, the Rio headphone stand and the Rio MagSafe charging stand. These two items are very high quality, made from aluminium and are finished with a lovely anodized coating. I like these products as they can stick down directly to any surface with sticky pads or even hook over a desk pad. Sitting on the headphone stand is my Logitech headset. Their top selling feature is 7.1 surround sound and they also feature a removable microphone and cable which makes them look a lot cleaner when they're sat on that stand. Moving over to the left hand side, we have a Novium Designs Interstellar hover pen this is more of a showcase piece, but from time to time, I do pick it up and jot down some ideas for videos and quickly sketch out some designs for 3D projects I have. Behind this is a 3D printed stand for my Logitech MX Master 3S when I'm not using it. 
It was a free file from printables and it's the perfect fit. It's also very similar to my G502X mouse in size and shape. So when I'm not using that, it also sits in it, but it's not quite as snug. This is also where I place my Hoto air capsule. This little device is one of my favorite pieces of tech. It's a simple electronic air duster and vacuum which helps me clean up any mess that I make at this desk, which is a lot when you eat at the place you work. Rolling back to mice, that's right, I have two. A Logitech MX Master 3S, which I use exclusively with my MacBook Pro, and the Logitech G502X gaming mouse, which I use for, well, gaming. I combine these with the Monsgeek M1 mechanical keyboard. I absolutely love this keyboard. It looks incredible, sounds great, is built really well, and considering the materials and quality, it's very well priced. Just take a listen. It is a really great keyboard overall, and it's definitely worth checking out. But my peripherals do not end there. I recently picked up the Apple Magic Trackpad in black. Why? Honestly, using any mouse that isn't an Apple Magic mouse on the Mac isn't the best experience. Scrolling is clunky, movement is not very smooth, and I miss all the gestures associated with using a trackpad. There was no way I was ever going to use the Magic Mouse, so this was the next best option, and it's actually really good for what I use it for. I place this to the left of my keyboard and use this in apps like Photoshop, Lightroom, and Premiere Pro. It's better for zooming in and out of photos, scrolling timelines, and swiping between multiple applications. Just above this is another Delta Hub Rio product. This time it's the vanity tray, which I use to store my AirPods Pro and a pen knife that I happened to pop out of a Christmas cracker many years ago. Once again, this tray is very good quality, but rather expensive. Now there is one very big visual change to my desk, and that is the lack of a desk pad. I used to be a big advocate for desk pads. They added a lot of protection to your desk and a large surface to place your keyboard on and provide an even bigger surface for you to use your mouse with. However, recently I've decided I wanted to see a bit more of the actual desk. Now don't get me wrong, my Grove made desk pad was great, but I accidentally spilt super glue on it and it's now ruined. So what did I do? I recently picked up two items to replace it the Logitech PowerPlay mouse pad and the Glorious keyboard pad. The Glorious keyboard pad is great for smaller keyboards like my Monsgeek M1. It dampens the sound, protects your desk, and looks pretty much invisible when you've got a chunky keyboard on it like mine. And the PowerPlay mouse pad is the perfect size mouse pad for me, while also doubling up as a lightspeed wireless receiver for the mouse and providing 24-7 wireless charging for my G502X mouse. If there was one thing I wish this could do on top of everything it can already do, it would be to charge my MX Master 3S. But unfortunately, Logitech and Logitech G do not collaborate, so I'll have to continue using a USB-C cable for that one. Now underneath the desk is pure organized chaos. What I mean by this is, it's a huge organized mess of wires and peripherals that power everything on this desk. Firstly, we have the USB switch mounted behind my standing desk control panel. I use this to switch my Kanto speakers between my PC and my Mac. That way, no matter what machine I'm using, I can take full advantage of those speakers without having to unplug them from one computer and plug them into another. Everything that is powered is hooked up to this new Belkin surge protector. I decided to upgrade from the previous version of this surge protector because it lacked any sort of holes to mount it. I was constantly having issues where the heavy duty Velcro tape I was using would fall off no matter how much pressure or tape I applied. I've learned that Velcro tape is great for individual items and works best when they're mounted sideways, but if you're mounting something upside down with a bit of weight and holding several plugs, it just doesn't work. A few other reasons why I upgraded the surge protector was that they shrunk the overall size and moved to supporting 30 watt USB-C charging. These two ports provide enough power to charge my phone with a Rio MagSafe charger and also power my BenQ screen bar. If that was not enough, the surge protector also includes a great warranty that will pay out up to £60,000 if any of my devices were to get fried while plugged into this outlet. And finishing off my desk portion of this video, I have a Philips Hue gradient light strip on the back of my desk and a Herman Miller Aeron chair. These chairs are ridiculously expensive, brand new, but if you're lucky, you can find some absolute bargains on places like Facebook Marketplace. This one cost me £20 secondhand and it's in great condition. I've been using it for several years and my back thanks me for it. Moving over to my IKEA Fialbo shelf, I can honestly say that not much has changed in terms of this shelf 
or what is going on. I still have the same M1 Pro MacBook Pro from my last setup that still sits snug in this lovely Grove made laptop stand. Behind it is the same OWC RAID enclosure with another Philips Hue Play bar on top. This one is mounted to an angled 3D printed stand and these are all connected from the shelf over to my desk and into the CalDigit TS4 using a 3 meter Apple Thunderbolt 4 cable. There's also the same IKEA fishbowl light with the Philips Hue bulb, storage boxes from IKEA and of course fake plants. However on the left hand side of the shelf there is three changes. I now display my old keyboard using a 3D printed stand and I picked up a UFI 2K indoor camera which I use to monitor 3D prints when I'm away from home. This little camera is cheap, extremely reliable and integrates with Apple HomeKit. So no matter where I am in the world, as long as I've got an internet connection, I can access this camera. Also, as this is integrated with HomeKit and I'm on a paid iCloud package, I get unlimited cloud storage for home security recordings. The biggest of these three changes is my upgraded gaming PC. Gone is the old white Corsair case, which is now replaced by one of my favorite purchases last year, the Fractal North case. This case fits so well with my aesthetic and I think it is the best looking PC case on the market. Inside this case, I'm now running an Intel 13700KF processor, 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, a new motherboard, and even a 3D printed airflow mod for the Fractal North case that I found on printables when I first started 3D printing things. This file is now unavailable as the designer has started selling it on Etsy, so I'll leave a link to it in the description if you want to check this out. In fact, everything featured is going to be linked below, so be sure to check out the description of this video if you want to find out more about any of the items featured. I have mentioned a lot about 3D prints I've made throughout this video and that is all done in this room. So when Ankermake sent me their M5C printer, I needed to build a little area I could get this all set up. So what did I do? I did what everyone does in a pinch. I went to Ikea and picked up this Besta cabinet which matches my walnut and black furniture theme really well. I saw all my 3D printing filaments in this cabinet, along with mountain bike clothing, camera gear and funnily enough, shoes. On top we have the Ankermake M5C printer. I've said enough on this thing in quite a few videos now, so check out my 3D printing video if you want to find out more about it. I printed a few amazing free to use designs made specifically for Apple products in that video and I'll think you'll like it. Even if they're not technically the best 3D prints, I'm still learning after all. Next to this I have more Rio organization products from Delta Hub. I store printing tools, pens, and I also mark down on these metal white cards specific print settings for certain types of filaments I use. There's also my Apple HomePod Mini sat in this really nice below low walnut stand, a lovely sized walnut catch tray from a UK brand named Reiko, and some fake plants. This section is always a mess, so to manage expectations, it never looks this clean. I do, however, want to grab a nice black desk lamp for this space to light it up at night, but I can't find one I like. So if you have any recommendations for something that would fit well in this space, let me know in the comments and I'll check it out. It's not all over yet though. I have a few odd pieces that complete this whole room. I have a Philips air purifier that I move around the room from time to time. I bought this because no matter how much I vacuum or dusted this room, it always seemed to return hours later. It is also very much needed whenever I'm 3D printing as sometimes depending on what you print with these devices, they can spit out some microplastics into the air, which can be very bad for long-term health. This has improved the air quality a lot as it has a very good sensor which detects any airborne particles and kicks into action straight away. I also have this great Japandi style side table from Reiko beside my desk. I really like this table, but currently I haven't got anywhere else to store it. So when I eventually move into a bigger space, expect to see more of this style of furniture as I'm a huge fan of Japanese and Scandinavian design. Then there is also my sleeping area. That's right, I sleep in this room. I did say at the start I had a small space to work with and the reason is it's also my bedroom. I have a basic bed frame I found on Amazon and a really nice mattress I purchased from Ikea recently. If there's one upgrade everyone should make to their home, it's to get a good mattress. Your back, neck and sleeping habits will thank you for it. Opposite the bed I have an Ikea Fiolbo TV unit with another desk shelf on top which sits my LG Smart TV. I've had this TV for several years and connected to it is an LG soundbar and mounted behind it is my Apple TV 4K. I also have another Philips Hue gradient light strip mounted to some 3D printed LED channels I designed and printed myself specifically for TVs to give an even glow around the whole TV. 
instead of just bouncing light off the wall. I'll leave a link to my printables page where you can download them for yourself and print them if you have a 3D printer. Finishing off everything is another catch-all tray from Reiko, this time in black, more fake plants, my PS5 controller in a 3D printed controller stand, a Philips Hue hub, a Philips Hue remote next to my bed, and the TP-Link Deco X20 Wi-Fi mesh system. One thing I've learned which a lot of people who use any smart home tech might find useful is to invest in a good Wi-Fi system. I used to have countless disconnects and issues with smart products using the supplied router that came with my home broadband connection, and even my Philips Hue products would fail to respond. But the day I upgraded to the Deco X20 system, all those issues disappeared. It's been four months and not one item has failed to respond or randomly shown as unresponsive in the Apple Home app. So there you have it, and thank you so much for watching my 2024 setup update video. This video has been a lot longer than most of my recent content, so if you made it this far, thank you. I'd also like to say a huge thank you to anyone who subscribed or tuned into my content over the last few months. Some of my videos have reached some incredible numbers of views, which is unheard of on this channel, and it really has put a smile on my face. Another big thank you to any brand that has supplied any sort of products throughout the year that I've applied to this desk setup. If you're not already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. And 2024 is just beginning. I've got a lot of plans for content and I want to make it for all of you. Thank you.